Hello my friends, today I'm going to show you a quick and easy way how to create a beautiful abstract background in Affinity Designer. My name is Olivio, I'm a professional designer and I want to thank all of my patrons who support me and make these videos possible. That is super important, thank you for that and let's get started. So you can see here we have this amazing abstract background. I will delete everything so we can start fresh and here we have our canvas in Affinity Designer. The first thing we want to do is to use our rectangle tool here on the left and drag out a rectangle over all of the background and we will set this to a fill with medium gray. I already have set that up but you can just go in here to your HSL color wheel or grayness down here and select a medium gray value. The next thing we're going to do is to use our rectangle tool again, drag out a second rectangle. Let's give this a different color, for example, blue. The color doesn't matter at this point. Hold your control key and use your mouse wheel to zoom out because we want this rectangle to be a lot higher than our canvas in the background. Control zero to zoom in again. And now we right click on our rectangle and select convert to curves. With that done, select your node tool, which is the little white arrow up here and click on the upper edge, move it up a little bit. And what this does is when you now click on the node on the left, you see we have these two little handles here. Move the left handle down and move the right handle up a little bit until you have a wave that you are satisfied with. The next thing we need to do is to set a gradient for our wave. This is not for the color, it is just to give you a brightness gradient. So select the fill tool it is called, it's actually gradient tool, so click on that and then Click and hold your shift key and drag upwards so you are certain that you are dragging it up in a straight line. Up here on this area you can click to set the gradient color. So you want the left one to be black and the right one to be white like this. Now we're going to readjust our gradient. So the black edge shouldn't be too close to the border and neither should the white edge of our gradient. So let's move this down a little bit like this and move this up a little bit like that. Okay, that looks good. The next thing we are going to do is to select our move tool up here and hold shift and move your rectangle upwards until the wave, the lower wave is outside of your canvas. Hold your control key, click and drag the rectangle downwards in a straight line until the wave is inside of your canvas a little bit. This will create a duplicate of that rectangle. The next thing you're going to do is to hold the control key and press J like choker as often as you need to fill your canvas with waves. You can see here the upper wave is outside of my canvas so I can be sure that everything is filled with waves. Actually can delete this last curve if I want to, like that. Now select the upper layer in your layer tab here on the right side, scroll down and select the lowest curve layer while holding the shift key, that's important. This will select all of our curves that we have created so far. Now press Ctrl G on your keyboard, G like George, to create a group. With the group created, we are almost done, but now come the most important steps. We want to create yet another rectangle. Click and drag a rectangle over all of your canvas and use again your gradient tool to drag out a gradient in any way or form you want. And we want to set colors. I really like the combination of blue, a light blue and pink, 
but you can of course set any kind of color combination that you like that you enjoy now that we have done that, we set our blend mode for that rectangle to color. You have to scroll down a little bit, it's down here, and you can see already this looks pretty cool. But we have to do some more steps, we are not done yet. We can improve this greatly. So the next thing we want to do is to open up the group by clicking on this little um, arrow here. And again, select all of the layers. So click on the upper curve, scroll down, hold shift, click and select the lower curve. So all of the layers in the group are selected. And it's important that you select all of them in the group and not just the group, because we want now to adjust the effects for all of the layers together, but individually for each layer. I hope that makes sense. Good. Click here on effects and we want to create a outer shadow set that to angle 90 and then opacity 100 and let's drag out the offset like this and you can see that this gives us a beautiful effect here very very nice you can play around with the settings any way you want so any kind of setting you enjoy is the right setting and then we also want to have an inner shadow so with this i will click here on the offset tool that is a lot easier than using the settings here click on the offset tool and your mouse gets these two little boxes next to the mouse click and drag until you can see the shadow you can see with the mouse movement by clicking and dragging you can actually pull out the shadow is a very quick and intuitive way and you can put the shadow wherever you want. I want to change my radius so this is actually a bit softer like this and you can see if I do it like this I have a completely different result if I have a bigger radius than with a smaller radius. So this gives a thousand different results for abstract backgrounds really really beautiful. Now we have two more really cool things you can do. First of all, up here on the left side, click on Pixel Persona and then click here down where your layers are on Adjustments and select Levels. Make sure that the level adjustment sits on top of all of the other layers. And you can see now when I use these adjustments, I can set up my uh, abstract background in a very different way and make it really beautiful and also softer and or give it a bit more pop so that is very nice to have and then another thing and this is let's switch back over to our designer persona you might wonder why did I create that gray rectangle in the background I will show you click on the group and reduce the opacity and you will see that you can now have softer colors in your background and the cool thing is with the rectangle in the background that I created before I can go here and set now the value of black or gray or uh, white and this gives me an additional way to adjust my brightness and softness of the colors you can see you can do some really cool things with that okay that was the tutorial for today i hope you enjoyed it i'm looking forward for your abstract backgrounds please post them in our reddit group thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video bye